Hello there, my name is Ismas. Welcome to Top Channel 101. So today is a very good day for me. I have just hit 500 subscribers. As you can see, it is 501 subscribers. So I thought I could do uh, something special for uh, this, ach this achievement. And uh, how about we do uh, some kind of balloon type animation like this? Uh, so yeah, let's dive in, in Blender and uh, get to it. So let me delay that tube and uh, that cube and then uh, type in something like... Uh, TTG, let's see, let's see text. I just type in. I will, we'll do something like uh, 500 subscribers just uh, as balloons are floating in the air. Something simple, but I think uh, it is something that you can learn a lot of things uh, from. So, yeah, let's write this. I'll just rotate it in the X 90 degrees. Uh, so, go to the front view. And uh, yeah. Uh, so, what I like to do. Uh, is that uh, I want to convert this because you see right now it's a text it's a text object I want to convert it to to a mesh object that I can add as uh, the cloth uh, modifier or the cloth uh, physics uh, property uh, so I need to first convert it into a mesh but uh, uh, because if you zoom in a bit you see that uh, this has a lot of resolution and I want to have some control over how the loops uh, flow on these objects uh, so if we converted it right now into a mesh, so Alt C on your keyboard and then choose mesh, you can see we have these triangles. Uh, but uh, to have better control or to have better results, we want to have more quads uh, than triangles. Uh, so you can go in and uh, you can go in and select two uh, f two triangular faces that are next to each other and hit F uh, to, to change them into a quad. Uh, but you see we have a lot of them so it will really take us uh, quite a while. So what I like to do is, uh, let me undo this until we have our mesh. What I like to do is uh, to go to, I go to the text properties, then change the resolution to the lowest, uh, maybe something like uh, yeah, I think two is okay. And now I can convert it into a mesh. And now I, when I go to edit mode, you can see I don't have that many uh, vertices or that many triangles to deal with. Uh, so now I can just go in. And uh, also instead of just going in and selecting two faces, uh, then uh, hit F to make them a face, to make them into uh, quads. I can just go to edit mode, sorry, to edge mode and then Hit C to bring out the circle select and then select all the edges. Or what you can do is uh, select any of the edges on uh, one object. Hit Ctrl L to select all the attached uh, vertices. And then you can hit Alt and then right click. Sorry. Alt Shift, then right click to, to deselect uh, the, the end edge loops. So now we can delete all the edge loops inside inside and now we can select these two loops by hitting alt and then uh, selecting uh, the next loop then if you hit w uh, then you can use the bridge tool to bridge uh, those two faces into quotes those two edge loops into quotes so we, we're going to do the same with this so let's select one edge hit ctrl l to select the entire object and then hit alt shift and then right click on any of these two edge loops uh, to deselect them and then deselect delete uh, the selected vertices. See, we deleted this as well, so let's make sure we have that. That is not selected, and now uh, we can select this. <coughs> uh, right now, because this is a single edge loop, uh, we can't bridge them, and if you go to W uh, try and try to bridge them, you will get this uh, error. Select you need at least two edge loops uh, to use that feature. So you need to deselect this and this so that we have two separate edge loops. And now if we use the bridge tool again, can see it connects it fills out uh, those edge loops with quads i also have to make sure that uh, uh, the the edge loops you have selected have the same amount of edges are uh, all same amount of vertices otherwise you're going to have a triangle so if i undo this and then added an extra i uh, subdivided this edge so that we have an extra edge loop there and i, I selected uh, uh, this so the bridge tool will instead use triangles because we have an extra uh, vertex uh, there. So let me undo that. Just make sure that uh, whatever you select, you have uh, the same. The, the loops you select have the same uh, number of vertices. So 
I won't do this because it's the duplicate of this, so I'll just select this and delete it. Let me make sure this is recording. Okay. And I will just duplicate uh, this. Something like that. Select everything, go to front view, go to a top view, hit E to extrude, uh, so that we give uh, these uh, some uh, width, some breadth. Hit Ctrl N to recalculate uh, the numbers. Now we have that. Now if we hit Ctrl 2 to add sub subdivisions, uh, you can see we have that. It is coming to what we want. And now we can add some more shading so, how, so, so that we have something like that. Now, <coughs> uh, if we add a cloth modifier right now, you can see everything falls apart. Uh, but what we can do is uh, uh, because we, we want to have to preview this faster we can uh, switch off uh, this subdivision so that uh, that simulates uh, faster uh, we can add uh, a force field a wind force field uh, make it face up put it just below this uh, go to the properties and uh, give it a strength of 100 so see we have something like that Okay, so that's what we have, but uh, this doesn't look uh, very balloon-like, uh, so make sure you have some reference images to work with uh, just to see how these things should look like. So uh, let's go back, uh, bring back the sub -surf. Uh let's, uh, let's make them look a bit like balloons, so let's add another edge loop here another it loop here and one here just so we get maybe another one here can you remove this a bit uh, like that so that's what we have uh, we can add, let's see, let's see, let's see. We can add an edge loop here in the middle and then hit Ctrl B to add a bevel to give it a, some bevel because we want to make it look like uh, these balloons have some kind of a seam uh, just on the edges, like you see here or there. So so now we can come in, add another loop, add another loop, and now uh, you can hit Alt, Alt 8, Alt S to scale this along, to, to scale that edge loop along uh, its normal, so that we have something like this. You can see we have given that a uh, seam. Now if you want to add more details, uh, you can come in and add a few edge loops here so let's say there maybe let's give this as so a bevel add three edge loops and uh, if we select let's turn on subsurf here go to edge mode to vertex mode select these two vertices we can add in some detail like that maybe offset this a bit also hit double G, hit D twice uh, to move these edges along are the loops are they following so you want to you, we don't want to have a very straight seam uh, we, we want to have the, that kind of deformation in there so that's what we are adding here so you can choose to be as detailed as you want uh, but for the case of this tutorial I'm just going to Make it a bit simple. So you see we have that you can add that. Okay. See we have that. So we can also add an edge loop here. Then scale it in the uh, y axis so that uh, the balloon appears more inflated than it is right now. 
and uh, if we want we can also add a few more egg loops here so that we can get uh, that kind of wavy uh, pattern on our balloon gives us a very good a very nice effect so we can continue adding it there Very quickly, see we uh, we we have something that uh, is coming to life, and uh, let's see if we we need to turn off this sub stuff. See, it's falling apart right now. Uh, maybe before we worry about uh, the animation, let's first work on this R uh, zero. So for this as well, we can add that edge loop. Uh, control B to add a bevel then add another loop there then select that loop and uh, scale it outside so if we turn this back again you see we have that you can also do this for the middle for the inside uh, let's make sure that uh, control R and that scale it in so that we have that <coughs> uh, if you want to make that seam look sharp you can also add another loop just next to it a bit like that uh, it's not really necessary then we can add our wavy uh, pattern to them so the more loops you have are uh, the more detailed you can the more details you can add in those waves and the, then that will look even much better so we can select these push them there and select these push it there i think we pushed this too far so we can bring it back a bit so that we looks something like that and uh, we can select this and delete it because it's the same thing as this so we can just uh, duplicate uh, this push it there so we have our balloons now uh, we can make this look more sharp like that if we want do the same for this side and now you can see we have uh, that so now the next thing is uh, to start working with the animation so we can remove this off switch off the sub sub modifier and uh, play back this you can see it's falling up uh, down uh, so what we can do is come in and uh, we should Go to the physics property and uh, let's see change the mass to about 0 0.1 see now it's going up uh, but uh, it's deforming too much so we can play around with uh, with the structure and uh, bending properties so let's say 50 and 50 you can see now there is not uh, that much deformation uh, if you want uh, these balloons to collide uh, say maybe if we Yes. if we start off with this balloon around there like that something like that and you want them to collide with each other so right now they would pass let's see are they self colliding is there self collision between this let's see let's see let's see I 
think they are colliding already, so let's delete that. Control L. So let's, let's try adding this. Let's push this below after the cloth modifier because if it's above, I think the cloth modifier is also adding those subdivisions into consideration when it's working on the simulation that's why it is too slow right now so if we push it down you can see now it's much faster uh, but uh, again so if you want uh, these letters to collide with each other uh, you can uh, separate uh, these objects by loose parts uh, maybe let's center the origin select center control shift control shift alt c to center origin to geometry you see everything still works very fine uh, but uh, now if we move them near each other uh, we should they should be able to collide uh, with each other collision cloth collision okay there is already cloth collision so yeah i think uh, they can collide with each other so let's Let's see, let's see, let's see, structure bending air. Okay, let's reduce, uh, let's give this math mass about 0 point, let's say 5. Okay, it's about 0 0.1. I think this air is, uh, let's say 50 and see. Uh, we can also change maybe the structure of this to let's say 25 and a 25 here let's also give this 25 25 and uh, 25 let's see and the mass let's put it back to 0 0.5 Let's clear the rotation, rotate 90, and let's try again. Okay, 0 0.01, yeah, 0 0.01. Uh, you can also add another fourth force, uh, the uh, turbulence force, and uh, let's give it a strength of 50, and see how that will affect our scene. Yeah, perfect. And uh, we can reduce the wind to about 25. Maybe reduce the mass to about 0 0.03 for this for this okay let's try so you can see it's a lot of experiment experimenting so yeah this um let's see let's see what can we do with this structure 50 50 and 50 So you see how they are going through each other. Uh, you can turn on a collision so that uh, they can collide with each other instead of just uh, passing, passing through each other. So so let's set up the camera. Uh, so around here and zoom out. Axis. Let's reduce the wind to something like, uh, let's say, fifteen. And uh, we can go on and uh, bake uh, this cloth 
animation so bake all the dynamics so let's see now this is what we have some artifacts there so i think we can cut the animation around there around here so if we turn on our sub sub modifier for this to the materials and start working on that so uh, node editor select this give it a material let's try and let's seem to render it or change to dpu and uh, just call this animation and, uh, let's select one of those, give it a material. Uh, let's give it a principal shader. Uh, principal shader. Uh, let's also add a background. An HDR for our lighting, so environment, open. I'll find. Perfect. Now we can add our color can change the color management from srgb to filmic and film log and uh, we can change this to base contrast so that's what we have so far uh, we can uh, give this let's give it uh, something like that uh, give it a rough let's try and uh, we can uh, we can add a mix shader uh, because balloons have some some transparency uh, so we can add a translucent let's try a translucent and let's and see how that looks okay not really good so let's try a shader uh, let's try a transparent shader. And uh, so after that, we can uh, use the same shader for everything else. Give them the same material. And uh, we can just change uh, the color. So you can cheat a bit uh, to give it that metallic look if you want maybe for this let's try a different color as well let's try So let's go with that and see. So remember this is animated. So if we go to let's say see 
the animation is still there. So let's try a rendering animation and see how it comes out.